What is up guys, Steve here and welcome to another video. In today's episode, what we got going on is we're actually in Dillon, Montana. So as you guys know from my last video, we just got done fishing Rock Creek, Montana. So we did is we drove from Rock Creek, Montana into Dillon, Montana. And our plan here is to fish the Beaverhead River tomorrow. We're super excited. We've never fished it before. And what I'm really excited for is brown trout. Where we're from, as you guys know from our videos probably, we catch a lot of cutthroat trout, we catch a lot of rainbows. We don't really have a whole lot of brown trout where I live. So that's kind of gonna be our target species. We're hoping to catch a few of those just because they're fun. Basically, we're gonna camp pretty late. It's already about eight o'clock. As you guys can see, Sarah's already down there starting to set up camp. Remington's with us, she brought the dog as well. So basically, prep for the night is we're not gonna do a whole lot of fishing. We're gonna make up some dinner, put up camp. Um, we're gonna go to bed early because we're tired. And then tomorrow, we're gonna float down the Beaverhead River, so you guys stay tuned. All right, I better go help set up camp because you know what, I'm always over here with this camera. main goal right now is to get this fire burning because if there's no fire burning there's no dinner cooking so um, as you guys can see we got the tent put up um try to hurry up and get this fire going so we can cook some dinner that's the plan buddy Well, you guys, the fire is burning down quite nicely. Um, the sun actually just dipped over the horizon, so I think we're gonna make nice some turkey burgers. So what basically we're gonna do is we're gonna season them up right now. As you guys can see, there's a little grate there. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the grate over the fire. And then I'm gonna throw my iron cast skillet on there and cook some burgers.
Well, as you guys saw, we had some amazing dinner. Uh, we made some turkey burgers tonight in the iron cast skillet. I know I've said it before in my videos, but if you guys have never cooked an iron cast skillet over an open fire, you gotta give it a try. Long story short, we're not gonna vlog a whole lot tonight and we're not gonna do a whole lot tonight. Um, we basically travel all day to get here. Um, we just had some dinner. We're just gonna basically relax by the fire for another half an hour to maybe an hour and then we're just gonna hit the sack. Nevertheless, we'll see you guys tomorrow morning on the river. Um, we're gonna be up Brent early. We're gonna cook some breakfast and then we're gonna go ahead and get to the spot where we're gonna put in and hopefully we catch some fish. Well, as you guys saw, we had a light little breakfast and we're gonna basically move to the boat lunch now. The cool part about where we're camping is we gotta drive a whole like 50 yards to where we're gonna launch the boat. Looks like we have a line here at the boat launch. These are kind of the case with the popular rivers like this, but we're gonna get this boat launched and we'll see you guys in the water. From camp, you could already see certain fish being active, so we're pretty excited. We think it's gonna be a good day. guys boats in the water we got the rods already all set up for camp there's a kind of line up here at the ramp so I'm gonna put this camera away and we'll see you guys in the water the Beaverhead River is one of the most premier brown trout fisheries in the state of Montana the Beaverhead River begins at the Clark Canyon Dam near Dillon that's where we are today 
from here, the river flows 80 miles to the confluence with the Jefferson's River. This river flows through arid hillsides and is rarely a straight line. Banks are lined with willows, cottonwood trees, and grass. didn't have to float for more than five minutes before we hooked our first fish. Fish on! First one of the day! Oh! Big brown! Oh man, I just snapped him off! Oh nice! Good job! Fish on! <laughs> Here's the net when you're ready. I'll put it right here for you. Just where I got it. Let's get the fish. Nice. Woo. Nice little brown. Nice work. Remy, can we get out on that island? Seriously? Fish on. Big one. Yep. Looks like a brown. I'm not gonna force this one. I learned my lesson the last time. It's definitely pulling hard. Oh, he's definitely not ready. I'm gonna try to put him in the shallow stuff for you so you can't go deep. Uh huh. He's like, nope, you're not. Uh-huh. Nice, thank you. Fish on. Yep. Looks like another brown. You can see the orange one behind him. <clears throat> oh, he wants to go. All right. If you want to go, you go, bud. What are you going down here for? He's not ready, he's gonna pull. He's not ready. Here we try to go over you. I'm afraid Remy's gonna cut the line off. Remy, come here. Come here, buddy. Nice work, sir. That's a big one. Fish on! Yeah, looks like another brown. Not 
quiet ready. Definitely still pulling hard. Nice work. Oh, he's huge! It uh, looks like a white fish, guys. It's a big old white fish. Nice. <laughs> Mm-hmm. All right. Ooh! Ooh. Some of them need to tell them if they just come in, they'll let them go. He put on a, he's putting on a little show for us. Okay. He's a really nice brown. Oh, he's a really nice brown. Oh, yeah. We like aerials, please. Sarah's with another fish. She can't seem to keep him off her hook today.
Well, you guys, we're having a pretty amazing day out here fishing the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> Just kidding. We're having a pretty amazing out day out here fishing the Beaverhead River here in Montana. It is absolutely gorgeous out here. It's definitely a different fishery than we're used to normally back home. We normally fish um, Eastern Washington, Idaho, and this is definitely a way different fishery. As you guys can tell, it's absolutely beautiful scenery right here, just kind of these meadows and this beautiful creek. Um, before we go any farther, let me show you guys kind of the setup I'm fishing. This is more of a complex setup, and if you're kind of an entry-level beginner flash fly fisherman, I probably wouldn't recommend it because it's kind of really hard to fish, but it is really effective, especially at this kind of water. Um, general water depth around here is about seven to nine feet and there's a lot of weeds on the bottom and um, if um, I know a lot of you guys that are subscribed to my channel are generally from um, northern Idaho eastern Washington area um, If I were to compare this river, it's really similar to like the eastern Washington creeks that we fish all the time For example Rocky Ford it kind of reminds me of that same kind of uh, picky picky eating fish um, same kind of water same kind of technique now Let me show you guys what I'm using here. It's a little it's a little complex to set up um, take some time and it's kind of hard to fish but if you guys just give this a try um, you kind of figure it out it's actually really effective this is one of my favorite techniques for nymphing um, and it's been really effective here today so as you guys can see I got a pretty big indicator um, some of the favorite colors for me to use that I like is white or clear just to like a special spooky fish um, sometimes when I get into faster water I will use orange or pink or something like that but these fish are really spooky so white or clear seems to be the ticket so over here I got my 3x liter and over here I got some 4x fluorocarbon tippet tied on about five inches about seven feet from the from my indicator I'm sorry about five feet from my indicator and over here um, I use a triple surgeon's knot I would highly recommend you did not use a blood knot or something like that because this will snap right off then as you guys can see I got a little nymph here with a bead on it just to help it get down just a little green guy and then if you guys keep looking I got one nymph set up here and then I got another nymph set up a little bit lower. So same kind of setup. I got my 4x fluorocarbon tippet again and another 5 inches and I got it tied to another nymph over here. And I got basically uh, another green nymph here with a bead on it. This allows you guys to basically double your chances. I'm running two different nymphs and if you guys aren't catching fish you can kind of mess with the length, mess with the depth and then over here at the very end I got a pretty big piece of split shot tied on as you guys can tell. So basically this is going to go in the bottom and it's going to bounce and these nymphs are going to sit in the water. What that allows me to do is fish pretty at effective depth. It then allows me to fish the kind of bottom that's here that's really weedy and it's got some rocks on it without getting snagged up. The reason um, I believe this setup is so effective for me is I basically have my indicator, I got those nips on there and those little tippets, and then I got my split shot at the bottom and that actually puts a little bow in your line when you're fishing current. So their nymphs are actually presenting to the fish before the main line even actually gets there. And it works really well especially for picky fish. Like I said it is really hard to fish. Um, and another thing, another big tip for this to work is you guys got to make sure the indicator is bouncing. That's the reason I use a bigger indicator, even though it's a pretty calm stream. Is if you're not, there's a good, there's kind of a saying in fly fish. If you're not seeing a bobber bounce, you're not fishing. So if you're not bobbing, you're not fishing. So you guys got to make sure. Um, I've said it before in previous videos, but I set my indicator to my bottom weight at about times and a half the depth of the river. And you guys want to see the indicator bounce. If you're not bouncing, you need to adjust that length. And then basically. As I'm looking at the river, you guys probably seen where well, you see the current come in and then you'll see a little drop off. So you'll see that big color change. I basically put my nymph right at the beginning of those drop offs and I kind of let it swing in there. I let it go about 20 yards and then I recast. Now another thing with this kind of setup, I do not recommend you guys do the traditional back and forth cast. You're going to create a mess, it doesn't really work. What I like to do is I basically let the water load my line. So I basically let the line go out in the water, then I kind of flip my rod back. Let me show you guys kind of what that looks like. I don't know if you guys can see this on camera, but right here you can actually see the bottom. And over there you can see right here is a dark line. Basically there's a drop off over there and it's a lot deeper in that section of the river right there than it is here. So what I do is I like to put my indicator by here let it kind of drift in there and then usually right around the area is where I'll get a fish to hit. Like I said, it's kind of complex at first, but if you guys just give this a good old try, you'll figure it out. As you guys can see, I'm not really casting back and forth. I'm going to let the line out there. You guys can see I'm basically letting the current take my line, letting it go out there. And at this point, what I can do is I can actually basically use the water now to load my rod and I can flip it forward like this. So you guys can see, then I'll let it drift out again. 
And that basically, as you guys can see, the bobber's bobbing a little bit. That's what I'm looking for. I'm going to let it go downstream. As you guys can see right there, I either caught bottom or possibly a bite. And when you guys see that indicator go under, you might have a fish on or you might be caught on bottom. But as you guys saw with that splint shot down there and not an actual hook, I can rip it right out. I don't get snagged on a bunch of stuff. Hope this helps you guys. Once again, I'm not an expert. I'm not a guide. I'm just a fisherman, just like the rest of you. Um, and I just like to kind of let you guys know it's working for me. And if it's working, give it a try. And don't hesitate to comment down below and let me, let me know what's working for you guys so that I can improve myself as well. And don't forget the cold beverages. It's kind of the good luck charm out here. White water, nice. Well, you guys, to say that we had a good day would be an understatement. We had an absolutely wonderful day out here on the Beaverhead River today. Um, we caught a lot of trout. Um, we can already catch brown trout because we don't have this where we live, and that's precisely all we caught. We actually, except for I got the really nice big whitefish, which was actually really cool. I showed you guys the setup we're using. I would highly encourage you guys to try and use that sometime. And if you ever do want to come out here and fish this river, I would highly recommend it. The community around Dillon. Um, Dillon, Montana is just wonderful. Um, the people out here are just super cool. The fishing is great and it's just absolutely gorgeous. I mean, it's just a beautiful, beautiful place. And if you guys don't happen to have a raft, it's actually really accessible to walk and wait. It's a great walk and wait fishery. Yeah, we actually caught most of our fish um, probably getting out of the raft and just kind of fishing the runs and kind of the deep holes I was talking about earlier. So that being said, we got the raft all loaded up. We're gonna go ahead and head back to camp and cook some dinner and just relax the rest of the evening. What are you doing under there, buddy? Looking for snacks? Um, tonight for dinner, Sarah's actually making what's called a shepherd's pie. Um, it's basically what I just show you guys. It's gonna be a bunch of food basically mixed together in an iron cast killet, and then we're gonna cook it over the fire. Um, it's very delicious, and I'm looking forward to it.
So basically what we're doing is we're kind of sauteing things in this pan here real quick. You guys can see, got a vegetables and meat coming up. We got some mashed potatoes almost done. Then we're gonna combine all this. We're actually gonna layer mashed potatoes in there. And then we're gonna put it over the fire. As you guys can see, fire's coming up quite nicely. We're just waiting on some coals now. Once the coals are ready, we're gonna move this grate over and then put the iron cast skillet over it. I do if you guys had like a Dutch oven, you guys can actually basically bury it in the coals and then make the whole meal in there, which would kind of comes out pretty cool too. But we're working with what we got. It should come out pretty delicious. absolutely delicious this has got to be one of my favorite campfire meals right here you get a perfect blend of the potatoes and vegetables in here and all those onions and the meat get caramelized in the bottom and all the stuff just kind of cooks in its own juices it's absolutely amazing because I never tried this I would highly recommend it mm. this stuff's really good my camera isn't going is it they're gonna think I'm a little piggy. I don't want him knowing. I'm going for <laughs> seconds over here. <laughs> Is that thing on? Right back. We spent the rest of that evening enjoying the last bit of sunshine and the surrounding beauty that the place has to offer. There is something so magical about being out here. The mountains, the trout, the river sort of make you forget about everything else in the world. It's just the sound of the nearby river, the crackling of the fire, and your own thoughts. And that's exactly the reason we do what we do. One truly has to experience what this feels like to truly understand what it's like to be an outdoorsman.
Well, good morning ladies and gentlemen. It is our final morning here at Beaverhead River. Um, it's been a wonderful time staying up here. Meanwhile, we're just gonna take it slow, um, kind of make some coffee. We're probably not even gonna eat breakfast today. Pack up our stuff a little bit and then we'll head out towards our next adventure. Well, as you guys already know, all good things do have to come to an end, unfortunately. Um, we had a pretty awesome time out here at Beaverhead River. If you guys have never been out here, I highly recommend you give it a try sometime. Even though this adventure is coming to an end, our adventures overall are not coming to an end. We're going to be heading to more rivers, doing more camping this summer, making more videos. So if you guys haven't considered subscribing to the channel, like this video, leave a comment, tell your friends about us. We really appreciate it. I would like to thank all of you for watching this channel as always and supporting us. I hope you all have a wonderful day and we'll see you guys next time.